Hey guys! Right now I'm filming an intro for the video you're about to see because I filmed it twice because the first time I filmed it I feel like I didn't get uh, my the full scope of my thoughts out and I feel like I wasn't really thinking about uh, certain words I, I was saying and I realized the way I was coming off can be very offensive and is offensive to some people and I just felt like I had to catch myself where I was in a situation to potentially hurt some people and offend some people and that's never my intention. I have a lot that I have to say and get out so I may be taking clips from each of them and just putting them in here configuring them into one video or I may just use the second video in its entirety. I don't know yet. I'm about to edit it, but I went ahead and did this intro in case I do use clips from each. I caught myself not thinking about what I was saying, and I never want to offend or hurt anybody. So I caught myself, I checked myself, and I refilmed it with more caution to what I was saying. So go ahead, like, subscribe if you have not already. Hope you enjoy it. Hey, y'all. I have something that I want to talk about real quick. Um, I'm doing like just a quick get ready with me um, because I have something that I discovered today, like an epiphany, okay? And I just want to kind of get it out there. Um, and I'm doing just a little, I guess a little quick get ready with me. I've already started to get ready. Um, and I really want to get this out there, but I'm filming another video. Um, but this is very important to me, I think, and I really need to get this out here. So if you follow me on Facebook, uh, and Instagram, I made a story, um, and I said how I understand now what people mean when they say to wait to have kids until you're out of your 20s. I finally understand what people mean when they say that. The version of me at 20 was nowhere near as good of a person as the version of me now at 30. And I used to think when people were saying, you know, don't have kids until you're 30, don't have kids until you're 30, it was all about money. I thought it was all about finances. You know, wait till you have a good career and you have finances. Wait till you have the money this, so you have the money that. I never thought about it in any other aspect other than money because to me what was important is money to me that that's the most secure stable um, most important factor is money because I grew up with not a lot of money and so for me what's very important to live is money make sure you have enough of it making sure you save correctly making sure you know how to use it you know how to spend it you know how to earn it <laughs> make sure you have it coming in good coming in a lot coming in quick coming in all the time so when people told me when I was younger don't have kids in your 20s I, I never gave it much thought other than the money aspect and I realized you know it's so much more than just money you know you can have all the money in the world but if you don't have wisdom if your values are shot to hell if you're making all the bad choices and having partners come in and out of your life, if you have all the money in the world but you're an unstable person and you're naive and you listen to people who come in and out of your life, what are you really giving your child? You know, I realized that um, My children deserve so much more and so much better than who I am. And that's why I'm striving to be better. That's why I am sober. That's why I'm in college. That's why I'm in school. That's why I'm making these videos to help other people and to help myself and to help me get farther in my career. And if I would have waited to have, like if everything was the same in my life, if my kids were the same, they exactly who they are now but I waited to have kids until now or in five years from now 
they would be so much better off than me having kids when I was fresh 20 years old because when I was fresh 20 years old I was in a very bad spot I was severely depressed 2010 I got pregnant with my first kid in December of 2010 and that was the worst year of my life ever. And when I got pregnant with Michaela, my um, oldest daughter, in December of 2010, um, her biological dad, uh, I had no business having a kid with him, but um, I ended up having her with him. And he has not seen her since she was two months old. Not because I took her because he has made other choices that brought him away from, you know, his kids. That's his, that's his life to tell, that's not my life to tell. When I had her, I was severely depressed. Like, I mean severely. I had a horrible case of postpartum depression, okay? And I was trying to figure out the world after a very, very, very traumatic event in my life. It was hard enough trying to get through the my new normal after this traumatic event happened. So I'll go ahead and tell y'all, this traumatic event is my ex-fiance, he had died in 2010. I was 19, he was three years three years and two days older than me and he died in October or I'm sorry he died in August of 2010 I got pregnant with her in December of 2010 so the first few months after his death um, I was living life just I did not care to live I didn't care if I lived or died I didn't care what happened to me I was living life Party. I was living life through a bottle. I was living life through a pipe, through a straw. I did not care. I, in the events of me not caring what happened to me, I was very careless sexually. And I ended up getting pregnant with Michaela less than a full three months after he died. And while I was pregnant with her, I was trying to navigate, you know, with this new normal. Uh, and I had no grips with reality. I was not accepting my new life. Without my ex and with a new man, I had no future with. I knew I didn't, but I somehow was carrying his child. Fast forward, the pregnancy was really, really, really bad, okay? Like mentally and emotionally, it was really bad. Health-wise, like physically I was fine. You know, she was fine and I was fine. But mentally and emotionally and psychologically, it was horrible severely depressed okay i was so depressed fast forward to me giving birth to her okay he her father her biological father was there for her birth um but he went to prison when she was about two months old and she he has not seen her since um based on his choice he made choices that took him away from her and myself i didn't take her from him okay after I gave birth to her, I suffered severely with postpartum depression, which I'm going to actually make a separate video on, so I'm not going to get into much detail, um, but that, that video is coming, because my case of postpartum depression lasted years, and it was awful. It, it was so bad, um, and I didn't know that's what was wrong with me at first. I didn't know. But I was navigating with this severe postpartum depression, severe regular depression, severe anxiety, drug addiction. Mind you, I was not addicted to opiates at this time. I hadn't even tried painkillers yet. This was just coke, ecstasy, um, acid, stuff, meth, um, Xanax. But it was drug addiction nonetheless. And I was navigating through all of this stuff. Now I had a child. We both lived with my parents, which they're not drug addicts. They, they're very good parents, very stable. Um, I don't come from a bad home, okay? So they're very, like, I wouldn't trust anyone else 
with my kids, let's put it that way, other than my own mother. So my daughter stayed with my mom a lot when I wasn't there. And when I eventually, whenever we did move out, she always stayed with my mom. And in the middle of my opioid addiction, she did live with my mom for a few years. So in the beginning when I first had her, navigating through all this stuff, living with my mom, my daughter was put in a life that she never asked for. She was making mistakes that not only affected me, but affected my daughter. And that makes me sad to think about, you know, that because I chose to have a kid when I was 20, and then I was making bad decisions after, that she was living my mistakes with me. And if I would have just listened to people and if I wouldn't have been so irresponsible sexually, my daughter would not have been forced to live that. And it just makes me realize now, you know, there's more to raising kids. It's more than just finances. It's how stable are you mentally? How stable are you emotionally? You know, it's how mature are you? You know, when you're 19, 20, you know, 20, all the way up to like 30, you are selfish, you know, and you should be, you know, you're young, you should be having fun, you should be getting your life started, you should be getting your schooling done, or getting your trade done, getting your career started, you should be, but when you have a kid, it's very hard to do that, it's not impossible, it's just very, very hard, especially whenever you're a single parent, when you're a single mom, and you have a kid, or more than one kid, and you're trying to do all this, and you're learning, and you're navigating, and you don't have help. It's very hard. And I, I just, I never thought of it that way back then. I said, you know, well, I can work, I can get money, which I did. You know, I was always working, always coming up with money to pay bills and to take care of her. I did, yeah. But it was more than that because I wasn't there physically. And when I was there physically, I, I had so much resentment towards my own self for putting myself and putting my now, my, my new daughter, in this position. Um, I hated myself and I hated life. I loved her more than anything, I still do, obviously. And I thought she was better off without me. And because I chose to have a kid, she had to feel the wrath of that. And that's not right. My daughter, in the first five years of her life, had to witness things no child should ever see. I never physically abused her. She's never been sexually abused. Um, I made sure of that. Um, I never neglected her. She was always fed. She always had everything she asked for. I made sure she had it. But ultimately, I was still a drug addict. And ultimately, I would still leave her with my mom for weeks on end, years on end, days on end, hours on end. Ultimately, I was still working and going to school while I was a drug addict, while I was a young mother, while I was a single mother. It's not fair the things that she had to go through and the things she had to see. She deserved better than who I was in my 20s. My kids deserve better than uh, the selfish addict version of me. And she deserves better than that for the rest of her life. And if I would have waited to have her, um, she would have gotten the, the, the best version of myself. I feel guilty because although now she is getting the good version of me, and although my son has the best version of myself, I feel guilty that he gets it when he's a baby, but she didn't have it. And then that's something I have to deal with now, you know, is that mom guilt, that mom shame. And that's something I'm, I'm working through, you know. And maybe, you know, I can help someone else right now. Maybe a young person who is either getting married or in a relationship and they're young and, you know, they're trying to get through the world and they think that they're ready for a kid or they think they want a kid or even if they don't want a kid but they're just being irresponsible with their sex life. Maybe I'm going to, this can reach someone and I can remind you to use condoms. I can remind you to be on birth control. I can remind you don't have sex right now. I can remind you, you know, who you have sex with matters because you can get pregnant by anybody. And think about, you know, every person you have sex with is that somebody you would want to raise a child with because potentially every time you have sex, 
that's a potential baby right there. And if I can remind you to just be responsible and imagine you having a baby right now, is this the version of yourself you want to give to that baby? And if it's you say, no, it's not, okay, then choose to, to wait to have a baby until it's the best version, or at least a better version of yourself. And that you say, you can think to yourself, okay, you know what? This version of me, my child would deserve this. Because my children deserve the world. They deserve everything. And it just saddens me that my daughter did not get the best version of myself as a baby. It saddens me that she had to deal with drama and my addiction. And I would leave her. And she dealt with me not being there. And it, it breaks my heart, you know. Um, I am here now, yes. But the past is there. The past is real. And I wish it was different. I wish I listened to somebody when they told me, you know, wait until you're mature. Wait until you know how to give love. Wait until you know how to love yourself. If you don't know how to love yourself, how can you possibly know how to love a baby? If you don't have love to give, you can't love a baby. You don't have it in your soul. You can't give it to a baby. You can love your baby with all you have, but that doesn't mean you know how to give that love to your baby. And there, that's, that's a difference between loving your baby and knowing how to give that love to your baby. I think that is something we need to talk about meaning we need to teach young women even hell even older women you know we need to teach women loving yourself and knowing how to love your child are vital components of motherhood and um simply loving your baby is not enough um, you have to know how to show that love. You have to know how to give that love. You have to know how to lift your baby up and better them and, and raise them into being a good, solid person. You know, we're not raising animals, you know, we're not raising children. We are raising future adults. They're not going to be kids forever. And if your child is growing up, the first 10 years of their life with a version of you that is selfish, that doesn't know how to give love, um, that will not make for a responsible adult. The cycle will keep repeating itself. We have to end the cycle of babies having babies not knowing how to, how to love their baby, not knowing how to caress their baby's soul. And don't make a mistake that I'm saying who should have a kid. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to come off as somebody saying to not have kids. I'm not trying to come off as someone saying young women cannot have kids. I'm just saying wait to have kids until the very best version of you is ready to have kids. And the very best version of you could be 25. The very best version of you could be 23, be 32, could be 40. Work on bettering yourself. So when your baby is looking up at you, and they already love you. You're already the world in their eyes. You will always be enough in your child's eyes. But be more than that. Be the best you could be for them. And being the best you could be for them is not being selfish. Being the best you could be to them is not being a drug addict walking out on them. If your child deserves better than you, then be better. As I said my child deserves better than me. So I don't deserve to be their mother because I'm not worthy. When instead what I should have done is been the better version of myself that they deserved. And I wish I had someone to tell me that. If your daughter deserves the best, then be the best. Nurture your child's heart and soul and mind and feed them with love and positivity and growth, optimism, everything, education, loyalty, trust, everything you want for your child, 
be that. Everything you wanted as a child, be that. Everything you longed for, go revert back to when you were a child. And you remember just wanting your mom, wanting your dad, wanting your grandmother, whoever raised you, whoever your guardian was, you know what I'm talking about, when they would go to work or when you were at school and you just wanted them. You just wanted them to hold you. Be that. And that's something, you know, a mistake I made. You know, my child, the first five years of her life, she was waiting and waiting and waiting for me to be the best version of myself. And it's unfair that I made her wait for it. It is not fair to her that I didn't give it to her. And that's something I have to live with. You're young and you want someone to love. You want someone to love you. You want someone to always need you. But you don't know how to accept the fact that they need you because you're not used to it. You're not used to being loved. You're not used to being enough for somebody. So what happens? You don't know how to accept it and you don't love them the correct way that they need. Because your defense mechanism is to run and hide. Because you'll never be enough for anybody because you're not good enough. Because if you were enough, your dad would have stayed. If you were enough, your mom would have stayed. If you were enough, he wouldn't have abused you. If you were enough, he wouldn't have hit you. If you were enough, your husband wouldn't have left you. If you were enough, every guy wouldn't just want to have sex with you and leave. If you were enough, somebody would say they love you at some point. If you were enough, you would have more men in your DM. If you were enough, your mom wouldn't yell at you. So you'll never be enough. So when your child tells you, Mommy, I love you, you're enough, you don't believe it. And you run and hide and you don't love them the way they should. That's hard to accept. That's deep. That's hard to look in the mirror and tell yourself, I don't love my child the way they should be loved because I'm not the best version of myself because I don't know how to be. Because I was never taught love. I was never taught how to love. I was never taught I, I was loved. I was never taught I was enough. I was never taught I needed. I was never taught you are perfect. So now when my child looks at me with those little eyes and they smile and they say, Mommy, I love you. You're perfect. I immediately, I close off because I don't believe you. That is generational and that will keep going for years and years and years. Five, six, seven generations down the line. You're just going to have generations of women who don't know how to love themselves and don't know how to love their kids because it was never taught to them. Stop this cycle. Start a new cycle of love and nurturing each other, accepting the love from your child and giving it back to them even more. Wait to have kids until you are enough for yourself. Wait to have kids until you can look in a mirror and say, I love you, you're enough, and you deserve everything. And if you already have a child, work on that. Stand in the mirror with your child and say, I love you, you're enough, you deserve everything. Show your child you know how to love yourself and teach your child how to love themselves. Having a kid and not loving yourself is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Because when you wake up on days and you don't love yourself because you don't feel like you are enough and you have to wake up and go make breakfast and go clean up the house and go get your children ready, go change diapers, drop them off at school, they're not getting the best version of you. When you have to go pick your children up from daycare or school and you go to a job you hate but you need it because you need the money, they're not getting the best version of you. When you wake up for another day of monotony and you just cook the same meal every single day, the same breakfast every single day, and you just kind of look around and your child runs up to you to hug you and you're like, oh, give me a minute. That's not the best version of you. Your children will never get the best version of you if you don't allow yourself to forgive yourself.
I just had to get it out there, you know. Make wise choices, make good decisions, and until next time.